Hello, and welcome to Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we are going to discuss the topic of reference numbers in a patent application and some tips on how to select them. So just to refresh on the basics, reference numbers are used in the written description to refer to a part, step, or other component of an invention. Here is a snip from a written description or specification as it is referred to at the patent office. For emphasis here in this video, I made the reference numbers red, but normally they would just be rendered in black like the rest of the application. And those same reference numbers are used in the drawings. So here we see a patent drawing, and here you see the written description side by side with the corresponding drawing. And the reference numbers in the drawings correlate to the numbers in the written description. For example, in the written description, the keyboard is referred to with the number 106. And in the drawing, you can see that 106 is referring to the keyboard. Note that every reference number should be shown in a drawing, and every reference number in a drawing must be mentioned in the text. If you don't do this, the Patent Office may issue an objection or rejection, which would need to get fixed. Now, there is some flexibility the Patent Office generally does not stipulate what number you start with or if you skip some numbers, and I'm not going to get into all the rules here. But what I am going to cover now is my system of how I usually select the reference numbers. Now again, this is my system and you don't have to do it this way. But I'll give a quick example of my numbering system and you can adapt the parts of it that work for you if you think it's helpful for you. So a few general guidelines. Be consistent in the use of a number, meaning do not use the same number to refer to different things. So in the inventor's quick tip style of selecting reference numbers, I use a three or four digit number and I avoid using one and two digit numbers. Why? Later on when I need to do a text search on something in this patent application, three and four digit numbers tend to be more unique. If I number parts with single or two digit numbers, they might be used for other things within the application and it takes much longer to find what I'm looking for. I start with even numbers, but it is almost always the case that after I finish the first draft of an application, I go back and add some additional numbers to a figure later on. For those later added numbers, I tend to use odd numbers. Why? To avoid a number collision. What is a number collision? It's when you accidentally use the same number for two different parts, and that's not good. So by using even numbers for the majority of numbers and then odd numbers for the second pass, I reduce the chance of a collision. Finally, the first digit or digits of the number correlates to the drawing figure where the part gets introduced. That is another organizational technique that makes it easier to track down information later on. So here is an invention. It's figure one, and I refer to the entire assembly with the number 100. Then the main enclosure will be 102, and the access panel is 104. So you see I'm incrementing by even numbers. We do have some screws for the access panel, and we'll call that 106. But you can already see the drawing is getting cluttered. So if all of these screws are pretty much the same, what I usually do is just label one screw as I did here. Then in the written portion, I will indicate that there are numerous screws indicated generally as 106. And we have two gears here. I'll call them 110 and 120. So here is my completed figure one. Now on to figure two, where I changed figure number and the main number up top to 200. Now figure two adds a new gear. The gear here is indicated as 230. The two is because I introduced this part in figure two. The other gears I keep as 110 and 120 since they are the same gears from what I showed in figure one. So here is my completed figure two. Now on to figure three. Again, I update the figure number at the bottom and the main number is now 300 as you see at the top. But instead of that third gear we had in figure two, we now have a different type of gear than what we had in figure two using gear 230. So I will label this gear 330 since it was introduced in figure three, perhaps as an alternative embodiment. The first two gears haven't changed. They are the same since figure one, so I'll keep them as 110 and 120. And here is my finished figure three. The gear 330 is not the same as the gear 230 from figure two, hence it gets a new reference number. 
But now I've gone through the application and I realize I need to talk a bit about the teeth of this large gear 120. So I add a reference number for the teeth. And again, I'm not going to label every gear tooth, just what I need to describe the necessary details. So I label one gear tooth. And now that I'm going back over it, I use an odd number here in this case, 125. You want to keep track of the numbers and what they correspond to so you don't have any collisions. Again, a collision is where the same number is used for two different parts. So in summary, use reference numbers to refer to the important components and parts of your invention. Generalize where applicable. Think back to the screws we showed in figure one. We generalized it by just label one of them. We can do this when they are essentially all the same. Avoid collisions of reference numbers. An example would be if I use the number 120 to refer to the large gear in one figure and then use that number 120 to refer to the small gear in a different figure. So we want to avoid that situation. Using a prefix. Recall when I introduced a part in figure three, it started with a three like gear 330. If I introduce a part in figure 12, then that part will have a four digit number starting with 12, such as 1230. So hopefully you found this information helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you again for watching Inventor's Quick Tips.